Hello, welcome back to my channel, Josie Annalise. My name is Josie, and today this is going to be a bit of a knitting craft podcast. Uh, so it's been a few months since I last showed what I'm working on and things like that. Um, the reason it's been so long is working a full-time job for the first time. I just don't have as much knitting time now, which is really sad, but there are a lot of projects I have been working on. I'm very excited to share them with you. So, let me show you. First things first, um, I've been knitting on multiple projects at once, so they're all in various stages of completion. But this first one, yeah. Oh, the lighting's going weird, I apologize. But So this has a really nice textured pattern at the back, but you can probably see here, um, I made a mistake and <laughs> yeah, the pattern, uh, I just was very distracted and couldn't focus well. So um, I actually had to rip back like a whole panel about this big because it just, I think the stitch count was off slightly and it just messed up the whole pattern for the back and I wasn't too happy with it and still I don't mind the small ones it's kind of it's happening enough that I can play it off as like deliberate but mm, it just wasn't very happy so I kind of I ripped it back to a point um, and that's why it's not on any needles currently because ripping back and I'm considering starting again completely. I still want to make it. It's a really nice pattern and it's just gorgeous. And the yarn is really nice. So this is the front. It's knit top down. So the front's like stock in it and the back's this beautiful textured pattern. But I think I'm gonna start again because I'm just not happy with how this is kind of worked out so going to start that again but so in the meantime it's kind of been put on the back burner um i haven't touched this for a few weeks now and i've started another cardigan instead but this is the portage pattern um and i'll link the designer in a little box yeah um but yeah portage and it's knit in an uh australian alpaca blend by patterns um i'm not sure if it's available anymore this was yarn that my nan gave me um and she's had it for quite a while so um i'll link the yarn and the pattern in the description but yes yeah, so this isn't really happening at the moment but expect to see this one in the future once i start again but since we're currently in summer i thought i don't need a winter cardigan just yet so I thought I would focus on a summer autumn spring cardigan instead so let me show you my next one this one is the Koru cardigan designed by Aroha Knits and it is a cotton cardigan designed with these beautiful kind of creates kind of like a cable-ish look but there's no actual cables so um it is constructed flat as well due to it being cotton um the seaming gives it structure so i've completed the first left panel so this is the top um, and you can see oh you can see here the beautiful panel Yeah, goes all the way down the front so that's really nice and this was actually a pattern I had started or oh, I want to say two years ago so um, what happened with this was I got the cotton for this at a discounted price from a um, the factory at Rangarata in the countryside um, but they only, they didn't have the same dye lot for all of them. So I bought two dye lots. Um, and initially when I first started knitting, I forgot to alternate. 
So I changed bowls and I, unknowingly I changed to a different dialect. So I had two dialects and yeah, I changed to a different dialect. And so there was a very distinct line the first time I knit it. And initially I'm like, oh, it's fine. I don't mind. But then I realized I didn't know which number was what. So I couldn't make sure to like keep it consistent on the next panel. So I decided to stop and this was frogged. Um, and then I started this again and you can see the kind of stripes here now So that's where the alternation with the dialects occurred But because I've alternated this time it means that it's deliberate <laughs> So both panels will have this same kind of stripe effect so but just looking at the balls of yarn for this um, It's very hard to tell Ooh, Let me get them <laughs> It's very hard to tell just looking at the balls. So these are the two different dialects and you can kind of see on camera now that this one is a little bit lighter than this one. So I imagine that's why they were being sold at a discount rate at the uh, factory. But so this is Peyton's Regal 4-ply cotton. So 100% mercerized cotton. And this is my first time knitting with cotton, but it's really, really nice. Um, it can be a little bit more rough on the hands, I find, so I need to moisturize my hands more. But um, I've been using my uh, Chow Gu lace tips to knit with, and they've been so, so, so nice um, to knit with. So, yeah, I've got my left panel. <laughs> that's on the stitch holder and then I have my I have started the right front panel now as well so you can see here um, one thing I have noticed is uh, it is bunching because it's slip stitch on the side where I'm alternating it is bunching up a bit but um, I'm thinking it's gonna be seamed anyway so I'm thinking it's not gonna be too much of a problem um, but I really, really like this. It's really enjoyable as well. The pattern repeats really nice and I just love it so much. Um, and I've got these very cute, nice stitch markers to mark my panel. So yeah, these are the front pieces and the back panel, um, you can see in the pattern picture, it's like a really big cable or twist stitch. Um, effect and it looks really really nice so um, I've been mainly working on this project at the moment uh, mostly every night I do another repeat I'm watching some Netflix or something after work um, because it's summer here um, I'm like if I can finish it soon I can wear it um, before it gets too cold again so kind of knitting like a speed demon on this one um, so but I only knit this one at home just because it does require a bit more focus and attention to the panel but it's really easy um, quite easy to memorize as well once you've knit the cable pattern a bit you kind of just by looking at the stitches you can tell where you're up to so that's really really handy so I highly recommend this pattern and um, I also recommend this yarn if you like to knit with cotton so that is my Koro Cardigan, uh, the design by Aroha Knits. And then the other project that I've been working on um, are some socks. Always have to have a sock on the go and ready. Uh, these have been my at work project only, essentially. Um, so here is my sock progress. Ta da! And I'm actually knitting this sock for my grandma. Um, so I have found quite a few like craft stores here in Japan. There's one here in Sapporo called like, Canary. And they do have a nice selection of yarns. They have opal, they have some cotton, all kind of uh, company only ones. So I haven't seen any hand dyed. I did see one store that did have some Debbie Bliss uh, in stock, in stock though which is nice so um there's a few options but yeah cotton is the big kind of yarn produced here in japan rather than uh 
wool merino like in Australia. Um, so you can really see that reflected in the stores as well. Um, but yeah, so I, I saw this yarn, this sock yarn by Regia and I was like, ooh, those colors will be perfect for my grandma. She really liked the socks I knit her previously. So I was like, I'm gonna, gonna make her more socks and send them to her. Um, and I started knitting, I'm like, this yarn's really nice, but something's different. Um, and so uh, I started with a twist rib top because I was going to do a pattern. Um, but then I, yeah, I was like, something's different. I'm not sure what. And I checked the ball band again, and this is actually a bamboo, um, bamboo nylon blend, not wool. There's no wool or animal fiber in this yarn, but it's very, very soft. Um, and it seems to have a nice, still got a nice stretch to it. Um, so I'm really, really enjoying knitting with this. Yeah, this is my lunchtime project at work and I chose to do a slip stitch heel um, and gusset for this one since the last pair of socks I knit for my grandma were also um, a heel and gusset type. So yeah, I'm nearly there, nearly there. I feel like this sock's going to be done this week for sure. Um, and so hopefully it's only maybe another week before the next one's done and I can send them to my grandma. So these are my Regia pattern socks. So that's my lunchtime project currently. But prior to starting more socks, I did finish my other socks actually, which they should be around here somewhere. Um, but... Where is it? Oh, here it is. <laughs> so in my naughty by nature bag, I have my beautiful uh, color work cow that I've been working on. On and off a lot. Um, there's been so much change happening and it has affected my knitting, my tension used to be very consistent but with like all my travel and like last year I had a breakup and uh moving countries and just starting a new job like my tension has been very inconsistent and in this project especially you can see that so this is the sister cow um and I'm knitting in a beautiful swish yarns. All the yarns and patterns will be linked in the description box below. Um, but this beautiful colorwork cowl um, with these kind of flower designs on it. And so I've got this beautiful green yarn. This is Circus Tonic Handmade Yarns in Bird Butterfly colorway. I'll find out and I'll link it. Um, but this beautiful greens with some like dark speckles and oh i love this color so much um and i paired that with just this really nice natural kind of light gray almost silver kind of color and it's really pretty and yeah it goes beautifully in the project together i'm really happy with it but yeah you can see with my tension um the tension down here when I started last year is really kind of loose. And the problem with that is like you can see kind of the color floats coming in behind. It's kind of gappy. Um, which for this project I'm okay with though. I think once it's washed and blocked it will kind of ease out. That's what I'm hoping at least. Um, but you can see once I started knitting it was kind of a, a clear line. Um, once I started knitting here, my tension was a lot more consistent and normal. Still a little bit of the gap, so I'm not sure if that's the pattern, the yarn, or it's like where I'm catching the floats. But I'm hoping that once I wash, once I finish and wash the cow, I'm hoping that will kind of blend nicely. But so far, I really do enjoy this pattern. It's really nice, um, but. It does require a lot of attention and focus, so I, I'm very tired when I get home, so I just want something easy. Um, that being said, though, the chart is also very nice and easy to work from, so um, 
I do recommend this one as well. And the yarn's really nice and soft and my nice, my nice wool merino. So um, I have enjoyed working on this a bit more, but yeah, I guess that's the only problem with working on so many projects at once. I can feel like I'm not making any progress really on any of them, but like I am like, you know, I can clearly see in this one, like I've made like that much progress. Um, and you know, I have a quarter of a cardigan and another quarter of a cardigan and I've nearly got a full sock. So, um, you know, there has been a lot of knitting happening. Um, yeah, just very kind of split attention, very indecisive. Um, but at the moment, my focus is on the Coro cardigan and the socks. Um, I think once those are finished, I'll probably start knitting the Sister Cal again. But I was very happy to, to put some rows in on that one. So that was that one. And then... Uh, I have been knitting on my crochet blanket a little bit more, but not enough to show you this time. But um, yeah, so I went to the kind of craft store here called Canary and uh, so here in Japan it's very common to wear slippers uh, inside you either wear like socks or slippers or you wear socks and slippers and the reason why is all the kind of apartments or houses um, some like business buildings as well are designed with what's called the Genkin and so it's an area kind of a lowered area uh, when you come into the house or room and you take your shoes off um, in most places some restaurants as well you'll have to take your shoes off and there'll be a little locker to put them in um, so I bought my kind of pushing cute let me show you <sighs> these I, I have these beautiful like pushing slippers that um, a friend bought a pushing show bag from the Royal Melbourne show for me last year and it's like very cute it's like so lazy um, and they've been really good, but uh, I did have an issue where the threads, the seams, were coming undone. Um, and they're getting very worn. And also, um, if ever I have any visitors, they don't have any slippers to offer them. Which could be okay, socks is fine, but it would be nice to have some slippers. Um, so rather than buying some really cheap slippers, I thought... Uh, let's make some. So at the Canary store, um, I found these little slipper soles. So it's got this kind of, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm guessing this is probably synthetic. Um, it doesn't feel like real wool sheepskin or anything, but, um, so this is like the insole and then, uh, the sole on the outside and it's got these holes so these are designed for knitting or crochet slippers um, I think the idea is you kind of uh, knit onto it or you can I guess sew onto it um, but so I want to make some slippers and so I have these and then I had some yarn and I kind of just saw the term like yes yes so I have some beautiful Malabrigo yarn that I got in a wool swap and it's nice, it's more of a chunky, I'd say either 8 ply potentially or maybe even a bit, bit chunkier um, and it's beautiful purple colour and it's ready to go so I was thinking these will make really nice slippers. Um, but. I haven't decided on a pattern yet so if you have any recommendations for a slipper pattern that you think I could knit with these please let me know down in the comments so that's an upcoming project um, but maybe not for a while so yeah but so they're my current kind of works and projects and plans my tea bag I'm drinking matcha tea matcha coffee actually I love matcha but my parents hate it <laughs> so there's one other thing I would like to share um, so because of how kind of chaotic it was when I got back from my volunteer trip in Japan in December uh, I didn't really have a chance to show you uh, the beautiful yarn and pom-poms I got 
whilst in Japan with my host families. So I thought I would take the chance to show you now. So um, once again, this is all kind of um, commercially produced yarns, but I thought it'd be nice to show you the type of yarn you can get here in Japan. So whilst they predominantly have cotton and that's what they make here, you can also find some like um, wool or merino or like blends as well. So um, with my first host family, they were really, really sweet and uh, they I was knitting at their place when I stayed there and they were like, oh, let's go to the craft store and uh, they were really sweet and lovely and they actually bought me some yarn. So um, I chose this beautiful, can, can you see a connection? <laughs> beautiful kind of wine reds um, yarn. It's definitely at least eight ply or so. And this brand is called Wister. And from memory, it's, it's got sheep on the label. So from memory, this is, um, I believe it's a wool. Oh, let me, wool band. <laughs> yeah, I think, believe it's 100% wool. I can probably read this actually. <laughs> yeah, so 100% wool. Um, so I got that um, with the idea of like a beanie in mind. So I got three, three of these. You can never have too much. Um, and then along that, I also found these beautiful, like fake, fake fur pom pom, this black one. Um, so that was really nice. And then I also got a second pom pom, which it's like once again, all the, all this is fake. Fake fur, but so I got these two pom poms. Um, this one has a little clip as well, so I guess you could use that as like a keychain or something. But um, I plan to to put these into beanies for sure. And yeah, this one has a little elastic. Um, so yeah, the plan is I'd like to put these um, on beanies or craft or something. Uh, so yeah, which one do you think, black? Oh, great <laughs> so they're the pom-poms and that and then I also got um, with a my third host family they also took me to a craft store which I really appreciate it was so so sweet and so thoughtful um, and so I picked up some more yarn there so once again this is um same brand Wister and this is called Sil Silfide Mohair and this one does have a bit of English on it as well. And this one is 70% uh, Akuriru. So I'm guessing, I can't remember what the translate said, but I'm guessing that's either 70% like synthetic or wool and then 30% mohair so it has this really nice little halo on it um so i got two of these kind of also thinking of maybe a beanie or gloves or something nice um or maybe to put in a blend or something so once again kind of you one of these go with and uh so i got those Ooh. And then the real, real special one I got in my December trip was um, I went to a indigo workshop with my host family that I was staying with in Shimane. And um, so we got to pick out these little like hand towels and we got to do like tie dye with actual indigo and this huge indigo vats. So I kind of had to dip it in and then like it was like wring it out and then dip it in again and then wring it out and it was quite quite a process and then we had to do the rinsing and then it was drying um but that was such a lovely experience and i was so so excited um but then what i was even more excited about was that um just as we were leaving i kind of noticed they were selling some other products that were already like dyed and i noticed some yarn so, 
in this beautiful little packet. This is uh, some cotton, cotton yarn, and cotton minis. And this cost 908 yen, so maybe about $10. Um, so, so these were hand dyed uh, cotton. So, together pack. So these are the cotton. Um, it's very fine, so I'm guessing like maybe lace weights potentially. Um, but this one's blowing out. <laughs> But they're really nice, and I love how uh, we've got the like really dark one, medium blue, uh, light indigo, and then the, the cream, or undyed. Um, so I was very excited to get these, and I'm thinking I'd like to try like the crochet, um, I can't remember what it's called, but there's like little crochet toys and things. Um, so I think I'd like to use these in something like that. Um, so that was really, really special, and... I highly recommend doing an indigo workshop. Um, it's really, really good. So yeah, so that's all I have to share like knitting-wise with you today. And uh, yeah, I've been really enjoying knitting, but not as much time. So I have been knitting most lunch times during work and often after work, but some days I'm just like really tired. So I just kind of get home and just like, oh. <laughs> So, um, you know, with my big, my big sumiki gawashi <laughs> cushion. Um, but, so yeah, but yeah, it is what it is. Um, I'm hoping as I get more of a routine in, uh, I'm hoping my knitting will increase. And yeah, luckily my attention has started to kind of return more to normal. Um, it's a lot more consistent, which is really nice, but expect the coral cardigan to be finished likely by the next time I make a knitting video to share um, And there may be another project like the socks as well so thank you so much for Listening to me and watching me blab on about my beautiful knitting projects uh, I really hope you enjoyed seeing them and maybe they inspired you and uh, yeah, if you have any suggestions for the slippers or what pom-poms to use, please let me know down in the comments. So thank you so much. Please like, leave a comment and subscribe. Bye.